upon life's boundless ocean where mighty billows roll. I fixed my hope in Jesus, blessed anchor of my soul. When trials fierce assail me, as storms are gathering o'er, I rest upon his mercy and trust him more. He keeps my soul from evil and gives me blessed peace. His voice hath stilled the waters and bid their tumult cease. My pilot and deliverer, to him I all confide, for always when I need him, he's at my side. He is my friend and savior, in him my anchors cast. He drives away my sorrows and shields me from the blast. By faith I'm looking upward beyond life's troubled sea. There I behold a haven prepared for me. I've anchored in Jesus, the storms of life I'll brave. I've anchored in Jesus, I'll fear no wind or wave. I've anchored in Jesus, for he hath power to save. I've anchored to the rock of ages. I've anchored in Jesus. Well, good morning to you, wherever you may be watching this. It is our prayer that the efforts uh, that have been made to stream our worship and our teachings each week has encouraged you and kept you connected to the extent which it can do. Uh, if I'm honest with you, uh, this morning I, I feel a little sad. I feel a longing to see all my brothers and sisters in Christ and hear our voices joined in worship. I long to look people in the eyes while I'm teaching and not at a camera. And I know that many of you feel the same way. And as a matter of fact, if you don't feel that way, you may not have been as connected as you thought at Life Church. You see, we need each other. We need the encouragement and the strength that comes from gathering together as believers so that we know we aren't alone. We are not alone. Christ wants us to dig deep and plant our roots in community. He wants us to be anchored in community so that when the storms of life come, and they will come, we won't be swayed. You know, streaming our services has been very helpful, and we thank God for the ability to do so. But all over the country, we've gone from streaming services to just church on demand. You know, I'll get to it when I have time. Uh, I'm gonna go fishing this morning, I'll watch that maybe Monday, or I'm gonna sleep in and I'll watch later. Now don't get me wrong, there are times that that's how it has to be. Our schedules and our families are hectic sometimes, so you do the best that you can do. But church on demand cannot be our new normal. It just cannot be our new normal. Uh, I believe that even when we gather together virtually, all at the same time, all singing the same songs, and all hearing God's word together, that we are indeed in God's eyes together in his spirit. And you know, that's a supernatural thing. And folks, God doesn't want church to be a place that you just go. Anyway, we've said it over and over again. We are the church. The church isn't just a gathering. The church isn't just a building. We are the church. He wants it to be a community that guides and shapes your life. Like how, how involved in church are you? Is it just a place that you go? Is it just a thing that you watch for an hour or 45 minutes or so every Sunday morning or Sunday night or whenever you can get to it? Or is it a community that guides and shapes your life? He wants you to sink down roots. Now I'm gonna admit right here that I am a horrible gardener. Uh, 
just don't ask me to to plant and and get anything out of it. Now I, I know that Pastor Dave, Pastor Steve, and even Pastor Greg, they, they all have the green thumb. They've got things planted and, and they're they're giving us the, the fruit of their bounty. We just got some great squash from Pastor Greg a couple weeks ago. Pastor uh, Steve, he's got cucumbers coming out of his ears. And I know Pastor Dave loves to pass the time out in his garden. I do not have a green thumb. Not just things that are, you know, to be eaten, just, I have issues just keeping the hedge of bushes in front of my house alive. That's just, I just have an aversion to it. Uh, and sometimes the weeds that are there in my uh, uh, hedge of bushes grow four or five feet tall, and I, I thought it was like a tree that was uh, uh, growing there, but the, the guy came out and he said, no, that's that's a weed. So I would take a machete or whatever, and I would just chop it down, chop it down, and literally, literally, uh, not even a week later, it's back, and it is about as, as tall as me. You know what? Because I didn't get it out by the root. In church, Satan would love nothing more than to cut you down, to chop at your soul day in and day out so that he can discourage you, isolate you, uh, make you feel alone, and he can throw a wrench into the work that we're doing here at Life Church. But listen up. We have roots. He might cut us off. He might keep trying to get rid of us, but we have roots in Christ and our foundation in him allows us to keep coming back stronger and stronger. You know, Satan loves to isolate people and make them feel alone and unloved and unwanted. Isolation is a killer. It's a killer. If you're out there and you're feeling isolated, it can be something that really, really is detrimental to your health, your mental health, your physical health. It's like the old horror movie trope. You know, I like to watch uh, goofy horror movies sometimes, and, and uh, it's the whole, I'll be right back, right? Uh, there's a killer out there somewhere, and I'm going to go ahead and leave the comfort and the safety of all of my friends here in this nice, well lit room, and I'm going to go up in the attic alone to uh, invite investigate that noise. No, you're not coming back, okay? Isolation is a killer. And Satan wants to isolate you from other believers, from other people who can help you to grow, who can help you to feel a sense of community. So what does God want our community to look like? What does he want Life Church? What does he want all the local churches to look like? Well, if we look at the early church and what it looked like, I think we can glean some things that might help us out today. So if you have your Bibles, uh, you can turn here. If you don't, it's gonna be right on the screen. Uh, let's go to the book of Acts, chapter two. And Acts is a really great book. It's a book that just kind of lays out the early church, like how things started after Christ, you know, the beginning Christ, uh, uh, teaches and he appears to people and then he ascends and he sends the Holy Spirit and it's just the birth of the church, of the Christian movement and the spread. And there's a lot of great stuff in here, but Acts 2 verses 42 through 47 they, they give an account of kind of what the early church looked like. And I think if we look at this, I don't think we can necessarily get back to exactly what this looked like. It's a different time, it's a different age, but there's a lot of principles that can be gleaned here, starting in verse 42. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. Just want to stop there real quick. All the believers devoted, they were devoted to themselves and to the church. Are we devoted to each other? Are we really and truly devoted to one another? Uh, to the apostles' teaching, they were very, very eager to hear what the apostles were to teach. They wanted more and more of the teachings of Christ and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and into prayer. When's the last time you got together with somebody from Life Church and just prayed? When was the last time that you got together uh, from, with, with somebody from Life Church and just shared a meal or shared the Lord's Supper or any of that? Verse 43, and a deep sense of awe came over them all. 
And the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they have. Now, I know that at this point in time, <laughs> it's difficult uh, because of this pandemic and, and all of that. And we definitely want to take into consideration everyone's safety and health. But, you know, we can't do this forever. We need each other. We need to meet together in one place. And they shared everything they had. And now I thought about that. It sounds like such a great way of living. Uh, but can we get back to that? To share everything that we have? You know, I don't know. Let's try it for a week. Hey, Steve, I'm going to take your Jeep out for a spin. <laughs> you know, how, how does that work? I don't know, but we can find ways to work that out here in 2020 where we share when, when someone in the church has plenty and someone in the church has need, that we meet those needs, that we share what we have. And this is, they said 45, they sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. Not just in the church, but in the community. What can we do if we really pool our resources uh, and we would not only take care of each other, no, no one in the church should, should, should be in want, should be in, in a dire situation as long as the brothers and sisters in Christ are there in their community. And no one in the, in the community should be in want or in need because we are the body of Christ and we need to be meeting those needs. They worship together at the temple each day. I mean, we're, we're meeting once a, a week, right? When we're able to meet. They met every day. And then they met in homes for the Lord's Supper and they shared their meals with great joy and generosity. All the while praising God, worshiping and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. I mean, I just look at that and I, and I'm, I just long for that kind of community. Uh, I, I'll just be the, the, the one to tell you here, there's a lot of people that feel alone. A lot of people that feel um, isolated, disconnected, even pastors, even pastors. Sometimes uh, it is said that pastors, uh, being a pastor is one of the loneliest jobs out there because you don't really truly have that many close friends. And I, I just wanna get back to this. I wanna get back to Acts chapter two. I'm very frustrated because we can't meet, but we've gotta find ways to, to foster community even if we can't meet. You know, a lot of this stuff we can do on our own. Let's, let's face it, you can read the Bible, you can study the scriptures, you can pray, you can give, all those things you can do on your own. And by the way, you, you should be doing on your own. But we are also called to do these things jointly, together as a community. You know, there's a lot of believers out there that feel they can do it alone. Listen to sermons online, worship in your car while you're out and about you know, maybe give money or give uh, your tithes to the church through the online uh, or, or maybe uh, support other parachurch organizations and do, do the work of the ministry that way. And you don't really need a community to be there and to help you and to keep you accountable and encourage you. You know, all those things are fantastic, but they are supplemental to what God wants for you and for me. When God's people are in true community together, the world notices. We are strengthened and the Lord adds to our number. The Lord adds to our number. I wanna look at uh, something real quick before we close. Uh, let's look at Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 through 25. And uh, this is another scripture that is talking specifically to the body of Christ, specifically to the church. Verse 23, it says, Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. You don't think that you need motivation? There, there's a scripture that says, you know, do not get weary in doing what is good, to doing what is right. That scripture is there because you can get weary. 
You can get weary in doing the right thing. You can, you can get weary in loving other people and, and doing good works because it's hard work. And, and sometimes we do things and we don't feel like we're, we're making a difference. And, and that's exactly what he's saying here. Let's get together and let's think of ways as a community to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. We need that encouragement. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Look, that was written centuries ago, okay? And they were like, look, the day of the Lord's return is drawing near. Guess what? We're a lot closer now than they were then. So, you know, I feel like, I feel like our, our way of life or our community is under attack. It is under attack. And, 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 it's, and it's, a, it's a way that Satan can use to, to divide us and disperse us and not allow us to have the true community that we're supposed to have. You know, when I was in high school, I played football, uh, and I say this to people all the time, but it was one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life. No, this isn't about reliving the glory days uh, or wishing I could still go out there and play. If you wanna come over to my house, I'll show you the highlight films. It's fun, then we'll relive the glory days. But what it was really about for me and for all of my uh, team members, I guarantee you they can attest to this, it was about community. You know, I, I, I was a part of the community. We worked together, practically lived together at some points. We pushed together towards a common goal. We had each other's backs. We encouraged each other. And we were not afraid to call out a guy who wasn't doing his part. We learned from the instruction of our leaders. We did service projects together, and we ate many, many spaghetti meals together. When we won, we celebrated together, and when we lost, we cried together, and we tried to get better so that we wouldn't lose again. You know, those guys to this day are my brothers. Because of football? No. Because of community. Community. Life Church, if a high school football program can foster that kind of community, why can't we? We who have the common bond of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, shouldn't we be able to accomplish so much more? Life Church, and I'm talking to you, not the pastors. Not the pastors. I'm talking to those of you who make up the body of Christ called Life Church Calvert. And this is the very simple boiling down my message this morning right here. You must find a way to foster community during this season of pandemic we find ourselves in. You have to be intentional. And I'm saying that because it's not just the pastor's job. It's not just the staff member's job to do that. We are called to equip you to do the work of the ministry. You have to be intentional about community. And I'm gonna ask you to do something this week. I want you to think and I want you to pray about a way that you personally can foster community. It doesn't have to involve large gatherings of people. You know, at this point it can't, right? But we have to get creative. We have to be intentional because community, communities are not built on accident. If we aren't intentional, it won't happen. Will you pray? Will you seek God and ask him how you can build community at Life Church during the next few months and beyond? If you need guidance, if you need prayer, if you need advice or you need resources, please reach out to any of the pastors and we will help. We are here to equip you to do the ministry that God has laid upon your heart. Let's pray right now that God will speak to each of us individually this week through our prayers, through the Holy Spirit and through others. Father, we just, uh, we ask for wisdom. God, this is an unprecedented time. We, things have been shaken up and 
there's only so many ideas that we can come up with to, to foster community when, when, when it's very difficult for us to meet together. Father, we just uh, we want to lay that at your feet. We want to lay uh, Life Church at your feet. And, and we just want to ask that you would just help us to be intentional about fostering community with each other during this time. Father, we, we just need your help. We need the Holy Spirit's help. We need you to just, uh, just illuminate our minds and show us how we can do this, Father, until we can meet again together, all together. Father, we long for that day. But even more so, we long for the day when we get to see you face to face and worship you right there in heaven, Father. We love you. We ask for your help this week in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>